people literally go there just to be seen like, man, I'm in Magic City. Right. And it's a cool thing, man. You've had politicians in there. You've had athletes, entertainers. You know what I'm saying? And that's, how, that's what Magic City's brand is. They made you, all them little people together. Mm. It's what Magic City is. Without the people, I used to say, we ain't, we ain't nothing. We right. Ain't nothing. He's the founder of the famous and most important strip club in the nation, Magic City, right here in Atlanta, Georgia. I welcome to Sip and Smoke, my man, Mr. Magic. But you being the guest, you gotta make the toast. All right. What are we toasting to? I'm toasting to your little spot here. Slipping, smoke, I like yes, that. Yes, sir. I Fellowship, like that. man. This I'm, your first time here? It's very nice. And yes, I, sir. I, I was well, in my area, too. I'm not far from you guys. Mm -hmm. so. um, I don't know why I ain't been slipping and smoking. <laughs> well, first and foremost, man, on that, on that topic of business, you know what I'm saying? I just opened this. Fellowship has been open for, what, two years now. You've had a staple in Atlanta for years. What advice would you give me to keeping a business relevant for over multiple decades? Well, the big thing is, you know, you, you got to stay in control. Uh, a lot of times people get in and new businesses mm -hmm. and they let somebody else run it too fast. Mm -hmm. and you got to learn everything before you start to let somebody else run it, run it. You, you want to know how every function works and then you can hand over the range. It's like a baby, you letting it grow. And with this new business, you don't right. want to let nobody take your baby too early. Mm -hmm. So you need to develop it first. And then I, mean, I never even thought about other people. I used to do it all and until, they got, until I got rolling, until I got comfortable with the dollars. Yeah. Then I started letting some other people, you know, drive. But at the beginning, I drove it myself. Right. You know, just where I know where every light switch, everything. everything. I wanted the air condition work, you know, everything, everything worked. Yeah. So then I got more comfortable with other people. Like people don't even know the, the history behind Magic City. You know what I'm saying? And did you even think in your wildest dreams that you would have such an impact on not only no. the business game, but the culture? No, not at all. Not at all. Um, it just, everything happens almost yearly. You know, everything that happens. I was just talking to your little lady up there and she was asking me about my greatest experience. I told her, I may have that tonight. You know, <laughs> I don't know. But you know what I'm saying? Every night I try to I have a good experience. It might be with a little person sometimes. Right. They come in and they make you have a good time. It might be a superstar mm -hmm. and you might have a good time with them. So it's, it's about the people. The so, people make the nights. Right. So that being said, how long has Magic City been open? Uh, opened up, I think, eight, October 85. 85? October 85, man. Uh -huh. <laughs> and yeah. and what, was, what was that moment where you had like an aha moment where it was like, okay, I got something here. You know what I'm saying? I guess 89 was a big year. Dominique and Dion came to the town. Yeah. You know, a couple fly guys right, that right. sort of. They were some of my real first, real big guys. Yeah. Them two, you know what I'm saying? So them, Andre Rising. Yeah. Once I started meeting some of them, and then they started bringing me more friends, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, and the linebacker for Kansas, Derek Thomas. Yeah. You know, DT. So I started meeting these guys, and things got better and better from there. Mm -hmm. Just started springboarding up, you know, better and better. Then Dion brought Hammer. MC. And I was like, who is that? <laughs> and, you know, he was hot too back uh -huh. then. So, you know, and from there, it just sort of never stopped. It just kept on going. Take me back to that night where, I mean, I, I remember like it was yesterday, my cousin who served as my assistant, he had picked me up from the facility and was like, bruh, bruh, it's on, it's on. And I'm like, mm. what you talking about? Man, Gucci vs. Jeezy, Gucci vs. Jeezy. And the internet shut down, you know, because yeah. everybody, you know, wanted to wanted to tune in, but what people don't know, well, some people may know, it was it was shot in Magic City. Yeah. What was it like being, you know, when it was presented to you? How did that even happen? And knowing me being an, uh, uh, you know, from Atlanta and understanding the tension from Jeezy, the tension from Gucci. What yeah. was that? 
It was a lot of tension, you know, but real tension, real tension, real tension. But, you know, we started talking. Apple TV played a big part. That was mm -hmm. them. And they played a big part in it. And um, P, P, mm -hmm. yeah, from uh, QC. QC, he played a big part in it. He got involved in it. Um, I guess it was what they were trying to put together Tip and Jeezy at first. Right. And then I guess they came back and it was going to be, and they switched it. I don't know why, but they switched it. And the next thing I know, I heard it was going to be Gucci. Right. You know, so Gucci had just shot some kind of little video maybe a month or so before then with the, some young lady from Atlanta, a little rapper up on the roof. So it turned out pretty good just watching them two. Um, they're both growing up. It takes time. A lot of wounds be open from, from our younger years. Mm -hmm. And it takes men to grow up in order to move forward and let some things go. Let bygones be bygones and, and move on. But they seem like they're about money now right, instead right. of egos. That's where you got to get to. Mm -hmm. you know, you gotta get I to think you. as a man, bro, you have to be able to discern when is it right to flex my muscle and when is it right to just kind of sit back and, 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 and let it play out? When you flex your muscle, sometimes you mess up your check. You know what mm. I'm saying? You mess up the check. You know, the muscle and the check don't go together sometimes. Right. So it's the bigger man is the one who can walk off. How did you even come up with the, the name Magic City? Well, you know, I got the nickname Magic from selling over the telephone. I was selling a toner, you know, over the telephone. Mm -hmm. And um, I became like, Maybe in a year, year and a half, I became salesman of the, of the month, every month. Yeah. So that's how I started it with it. And they started calling me Magic because I kept beating them every week and kept getting salesman of the week, salesman yeah. of the week. And uh, that's where I had the name Magic from. So then when I came, so it was easy, Just we just added the city. Yeah. And we just did it that way. That's how it came about, though. Mm -hmm. So for the people who don't know, and with me doing my research on you, one thing that I thought was extremely intriguing is you did get a degree from Duke University. Yeah. In in history. Yeah. Correct. I was going to do some school teaching, I guess. What? <laughs> Where did the idea come about when you was like, because then what was this? When you moved to Atlanta, what is 79, it? I came to Atlanta. So I guess around 82, 83, I was hanging out, partying hard, and um, some girls took me to Foxy Lady. Mm -hmm. And I was like, what is Foxy Lady? They said, man, it's a strip club. What the hell is a strip club? So they took me in there, and that was the first time I was introduced to strip. And uh, I was just overwhelmed, I guess, by it, you know. I it see. was rough over there, too, you know. They was, um, it was just a rough club. Uh, people might get knocked out, dragged out the door. It mm. was one of them. but. It was a lot of people and the atmosphere was still good. Right. You know, I used to put my suit on and go in there so they wouldn't be beating me up and stuff. Right, I used right, to wear right. my suit in there and I used to start bringing a little pencil and paper, jotting down stuff and I started looking and I was like, man, I like this, you know, and I, I used to come all the time. I used to keep going back there and then um, uh, Purple Onion, mm -hmm. I started going to do, just getting my ideas and looking. Yeah. So I called my Duke alumni and I was talking about, yeah, I think this is what I want to do. They was like, what do you want to do? I want a, I want a strip club. A strip you know, club. So. As a person of influence, you've been able to shatter the stigma of like, and I speak personal because it's like, you're always worried about your brand. You're always, you know, you, no, nah, don't get me in this setting. You don't get me. But people literally go there just to be seen like, man, I'm in Magic City. Right. And it's a cool thing, man. You've had politicians in there. You've had athletes, entertainers. You know what I'm saying? And that's, how, that's what Magic City's brand is. They made you. All them little people together mm. is what Magic City is. Without the people, I used to say, we ain't, we ain't nothing without right. the people. You know, so it's all about the people. You've managed not only to stay relevant, and I touched on that, but it's a staple in Atlanta. Like when people come to Atlanta, man, no matter what it is, and we got All Star here this week, uh, this year, for Super Bowls, for everything, bro. Like, man, I, I can't leave Atlanta without going to Magic City. I got a person in my production company right now that's like, bro, I ain't never been to Magic, bro. But man, let's do this interview in Magic City. You know what I'm saying? That little, I call it the little hole, but that little hole did good, man. That little spot, um, <laughs> and it's sort of good because when you open six days, it's hard to get a lot of people. 
mm -hmm. that got money. Right. We're going to just come and spend their money. You see, because that's all you're doing is you spend your money. Mm -hmm. You know, so most guys like clubs because you don't have to spend the money. Right. You see, so it's really changed out better than I ever could imagine. You know, you have this establishment that is that is solely responsible for the culture in Atlanta, right? And one thing about it, if something pops in magic, it pops everywhere. Not only in Atlanta, talking about the nation, not only the nation, but the world. How have you managed to, to control that narrative to, or how, do, how, how would an artist even present something? Hey, I got this new single. It's more with the DJs. You gotta give the DJs a lot of credit over the years. I think they um, established that and they've helped us get on the map with that. Right. Fernando, the one that passed away. Right, right. Fernando nice. played a big role and um, you know, him and Jeezy was tied and you know, so different little DJs and the record companies, um, they have the people come around to different establishments. I think a lot of those guys played a bigger role than I did as far as keeping it and getting it lit mm -hmm. and keeping it like that. What's your main focus as a businessman that, that, that you still hold true today? I might not be the smartest guy, but I, I, I probably can work longer than most people can work. Mm. I probably try to outwork you. I can't, might not outthink you, but I, I can sit in the box longer than most people can as far as just work, you know, getting things done. Uh, so, I mean, you're killing it in many different aspects. And what I, what I appreciate for you, and especially in the modern day, you know, you're able to, to, to run such a quality product day in and day out. You know, every time folks go to Magic, I ain't never heard nobody say, walk out of Magic and be like, Rev, that's Magic, or I ain't never had no good time going there. It's the consistency that's key, not only in the business, but in life. And that's the people. That's, that's if you just let people be their self and let them just have a good time. That's the people, the people making the atmosphere. It's all about the people. Right. So I'll say this, man, right before we get out of here. We got a nightcap question. Okay. What's now? What's next? And is there anything you would like to do that you haven't done yet? I'm in a great spot. Like, uh, uh, I'm almost running out of uh, answers and stuff. So, like, my head, I don't really want to do a lot more. Uh, you just want to chill. Yeah, I'm at that spot. I'm at that spot somewhere. I'm just like chilling. I'm traveling. Uh, good food. Oh, good wine. <laughs> I'm simple now. I haven't got to the simple part where um, I'm just not looking to start all over again with a bunch of new projects and right. projects now. Um, I'll invest, but I like to stay on the outside now. I'm not as greedy. I'll take a slice of pizza now. Mm -hmm. you, you might run the thing. And I'll just give, give me a slice. Yeah, just, just a slice. I don't want the slice, whole thing. Man. I don't want the whole thing. So I'm at a good spot like that. Mm -hmm. And I'm not really chasing anything. Um, my health is my wealth at this stage of the game. That's like I say, I've just hit the big six six. So uh, training and, and uh, eating right is where I'm at right now, and trying to get as much sleep as possible. I that, like that. That's where I'm at. Right is there now. anything that you want to do that you haven't done yet? I've been no. I think I'm pretty pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'm pretty good. Right. You know, I don't think I'm chasing at this point in time. Mm -hmm. um, I've been, I'm, I'm just there. I'm in a right. good spot. You know? man, listen, good bro. Spot, man. Like just to hear, just just for you to 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 bless us with your presence, man. And 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 for a lot of people, looking at your face, it, like the face. They don't know me. They don't know you. No. So that's why it's so big. No. Because when you say Magic City, like oh, he's the creator of Magic yeah. City. A lot of years ago. You know what I'm saying? Thank you. Thank you for coming along, man, you know, and, and, and blessing me in, in, in this show, Sip and Smoke, for the wisdom. And I can't thank you enough. And I'm wishing you nothing but the best. And I, I know it's going to be good because you're good. Mm -hmm. And your heart's good. You always had a good heart, my brother. Yes, sir. So appreciate I'm wishing you. you the best. Thank you. So as I always say to end the show, one finger, one pinky, one thumb, one love. Appreciate you, Mr. Magic, and we out of here, man. Yeah, yeah, that's my main thing.